So in this tutorial I'm going to show another marker removal technique. Uh, this time I'm going to use uh, the Roto Paint node and use some of the sort of fairly basic but nevertheless useful uh, painting tools inside um, in, inside this node to uh, to do basically a live paint removal. And uh, and the advantage of this is because this actually samples on each frame. Um, particularly if I use the clone node, then if this samples on each frame, then it has the benefit of responding to any changes of lighting on the set. Um, and also, because it is sampling on every frame, then it deals much better with the, um, with the, uh, with the, the problems created by repetitive textures. Okay, so if I just zoom into my character, the one that I'm going to deal with this time is this this one here that just sort of um, this one, this one here that just pops pops out at the side of his ear, and then if I just zoom out, and come across, it goes on its it goes on its merry way. But prior to the frame frame 30 or frame 31, where it's uh, where it first becomes visible, prior to that, it's completely hidden behind his head. Okay. So I guess the problem that we're going to have is going to be this frame here, the frame 31, because there's clearly a sort of very close intersection between uh, areas that we that's really important that we retain and the area that we need to patch. Okay, so as always, uh, we start with a track, and I've done that uh, track already, so we can see that uh, I started it on frame 31. Uh, so I start I started it here. Um, Come to come to my tracker. You can see my tracker is on, is on it at that particular point. What I did on frame 30 um, is I is is that I um, I just stopped the track, so the track didn't doesn't doesn't actually have any any motion data until frame uh, frame 31. Okay, so it tracks on nicely from that point onwards, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I'm going to come back to that offending frame of frame 31 and just turn off my tracker and we'll take a look at how we can do this. Okay. So the node that we want to use is the Roto Paint node. You can just type P like I just did and that brings up the Roto Paint node. The Roto Paint node is distinctive from the Roto node mainly because it's got these additional paint tools. It's got the brush tool there with the brush and the eraser. It's got the clone stamp tool that also has a reveal. It has a blur and sharpen and smear function and it has this uh, simple dodge and burn function. Okay. Um, the difference, of course, between these, these are, you'll be familiar with these if you use Photoshop, these features. Uh, the difference is that each of these uh, are stored as stro individual strokes, pretty much like the history in, um, in, in Photoshop, but each can be set uh, to a specific lifetime. And obviously, I don't want my, uh, any of my paint strokes to exist prior to frame 31, otherwise they're going to punch a hole in my character. Okay, so I'm, as I said, I'm going to use the clone stamp. So here's the clone tool. So I'll just make sure that that's selected, and then I've got some basic settings up here. In terms of the opacity, I'm just going to take that down to 0 0.2 so that it so that I can sort of paint uh, sort of nice and nice and nice and slowly and progressively. Um, also, I'm going to need my um, my brush size to be much smaller than this. Uh, this is only 1280 by 720 footage, so I'll set that to 10. Uh, we can see that's probably a good size. I inadvertently created a clone there by doing so. And then the hardness, um, I'll set that up to about 0.5, uh, and that obviously dictates the amount of feather that's that's that exists within this. Anyway, I'll turn that one off, and we'll start again. So we know that we need to be sampling from the left side, or the the top or the bottom of this. We obviously can't sample from the right side because at this intersection point we'd be having problems. So I'm just going to get my clone stamp now, hold down control and drag out and you can see what I'm doing there is I'm establishing the, dif the difference between my sample area which is the circle on the left with the paint area which is the circle on the right. And now I'm just going to hold down my mouse and just paint in and it really is this simple. Okay, And I'm doing it in one big move and by doing that it only creates me one clone. In fact what I'll do just to show something a little bit different is I'll do it in I'll do it in two or three. So I'll kind of go in and do do that part there. Then I'll resample and go 
come in and do this corner and then I'll resample again and come in and do this corner so essentially what I've got now is three strokes I've done that specifically so I can show a slightly different function of, um, of connecting the tracker to the, uh, to, the, to the patch data okay so that's obviously the next thing so clearly we have to um, we have to get our tracker and we need within our, within our tracker to set our reference frame which in our case is frame 31 that's the frame that we use to paint our um, to, to, to paint our, our patch okay so now it's the same process as before it's the process of connecting the transform data from the tracker to the transform data in the rotor pane the difference is this time is that rather than uh, because we've got now three paint strokes we don't want to be connecting it up three times and this time we're actually going to be connecting to the root so I've got my root selected and now I can just drag from the translate there hold down control and drag onto the translate of the root and that basically means that all the children inside which are, which are basically at the moment three clone nodes uh, they will essentially uh, go along for the ride okay let's just have a little drag and see what we get okay we see a problem and essentially the problem is that um, that our, our uh, is basically the life cycle of our clones. So if I select all these and we come into the life cycle, uh, I'll just have to come across here because I'm working in a limited space in the screen capture software. These are just existing for a single frame. So as soon as I move, move it onto frame 32, they disappear. So I need to set this to a frame range. Uh, you can see there I can set this to all frames. So if I was just simply painting out an area that was in existence for the entire duration of the clip, I would just set that. But in this case, I want this to exist from a frame range of 31 to the end, which is 1, 2, 8. And that will now apply to all of those elements. So what we ought to see now is that as I scrub through now, we can see that the paint stroke disappears when we, when we go to frame 30, otherwise it would chop off a, a piece of his ear. To illustrate that, if while well, I'm still in the lifetime, if I just change that to 30, you can see now that that exists on a frame too soon and therefore it takes a chunk out of his, his ear. Okay, so I need to make sure that that is set correctly. Okay, so we can now QC this um, in the same way as in previous by making a copy of the track and then pasting that uh, below our roto node and then making this copy of the track a stabilize which essentially means that um, that rather than sort of trying to track this across as it moves now we can we can QC this in place we can see it's not bad we've got a slight little uh, a slight little uh, mark that's that, that that's existing there so maybe we could fix that so let's have a look so you can see it's pretty much starting after frame the 31. I think what I'll do is I'll come onto frame 31 and I'll try and get a new clone mark in there and get it a little bit tighter. So I'm just going to come in here, select this again, get my get my clone node. Oops, I've switched onto the reveal. Um, just sample from a slight a little bit further away this time and I'll just go in and time that up okay now I've deliberately just gone into the ear um, again I'll set that lifetime from a single frame to a frame range of 31 to 128 um, again if we QC this now we can see that that certainly got rid of that problem we can see from here and we're not getting that little uh, that little slither of light but of course we have taken a chunk out of the ear on frame uh, on frame 30 31 on frame 31 we've taken a chunk out of the ear okay so how do we get that back well we can get that back by using the eraser Again, I'm going to need to reduce the size of the uh, brush. I'll take the brush down to five. I don't need to be quite so precise with the opacity, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep it fairly opaque. And now, on this frame, I'll just 
each other in the next frame, isn't it? So I'll just come in with the eraser and I'll just erase back. You can see that I'm just just brushing that back in. Okay, it's gone a little bit too far, so I'll just undo that and do that again. that'll do me. That's only a problem on frame 31 so I can leave that just to frame 31. And now we seem to have fixed the problem, we just need to check that frame there and that looks good. So if we can see that again now with the stabilising place and we can see that that looks like a good fix. Okay, so that is the uh, that is the live painting uh, option uh, for, for for this. Um, of course, the, uh, the the benefit of it. Um, I'm not quite sure what I've done there. I've obviously reversed something by mistake. Um, I've got a whole bunch of erasers in here where I've been inadvertently clicking. Um, yeah, that's fixed it. Just uh, accidentally uh, put in some erasers and, uh, and and painted out some some of my good information. Okay, so that's um, that's this uh, sorted. The advantage of this method over a roto method is 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 really down to the fact that it's uh, that it it's um, it's sampling the clone is sampling on the very frame that the patch is taking place. So what that means is if you've got any um, any repetitive patterns then they're eliminated by that and also if you've got a change of light so say for example the camera's moving and it's much lighter over here than it is over here and of course as that as these markers go from right to left we won't see that with the stabilize on but as these markers go from right to left then they go into darker territory and therefore the color of the patch would change underneath it so the advantage of the uh, of the of the life paint method is that because it's sampling from the same point and the same point in time as well as space then it's 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 picking up on those kind of light changes okay that's the end of this uh, short uh, demonstration i hope that you found that useful i hope that you'll find somewhere within your work to be able to apply the technique